Hello everyone and welcome, this is Dawn. So today's video is all about stretching those supplies. I wanted to share a card with you today that features mostly everyday stamps used to create this beautiful holiday card. I'm also gonna do things a little bit different. I'm going to include a lot of the process on this particular card. So this is all about the process of creating these mixed media, very involved cards. Not often do people show all of the steps in a video on creating these types of cards. So I thought it would be fun to try it out and you guys let me know what you think. Do you like it or you don't? I'm totally open. As usual, I'm going to speed this up and slow it down as necessary. But the first thing I need to do is create a bunch of colored background panels. These are what I'm going to do all of my die cutting from. And I'm using watercolor paper for all of these. Now I'm starting with the panel for my bird. This is what I'm gonna die cut my bird from. So I've taken some pumice stone and gathered twigs oxide inks. I smushed them onto my craft mat, added some water just to make it a little more fluid. And then I've dipped my watercolor paper into that ink. Now that ink is gonna move around, it's gonna mix, it's gonna create this beautiful mottled look. I'm drying it right now because I want to keep that as my first layer. If I weren't to, if I would not dry this and I would just dip it right back into the ink on the mat, all that color is going to keep blending together and I'm going to lose all of those distinctly different colors. By drying it in between, I'm going to build up a depth of color here and I'm going to get a much more interesting modeled look. Just remember wet on wet blends and wet on dry builds. Now you'll notice there's some painting on the back side of this watercolor paper. It's from a previous project. It's something that I didn't end up using. The great thing about watercolor paper is you can actually use both sides. So if you mess up on one side, don't throw it away. Just turn it over and use the other side. Now I think I'm done, but I'm not sure. And I do end up adding another layer, but this piece right here, I thought I would end up using. I do not end up using. Now, the reason for that is I did, again, things a little bit differently this time. Normally when I sit down to film a video, I have a decent idea of what I wanna do. This one, I just turned on the camera, grabbed some supplies and started creating. So this one is much more organic and you're going to see some things in the video at certain times that I don't end up using in the final card. So we can just ignore those. <laughs> All right, now that I am happy with the the depth of color here, the I just wanted a nice random pattern. I'm gonna do my die cutting and we're gonna use the W plus nine bluebird die. This is a great everyday die. It's the cutest little bird. Great thing is you don't have to make it a bluebird, right? Cut it from any color you want. Who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. And nobody's gonna judge you and say, I don't know, that's not quite a wren. Nobody's gonna do that. All right, so that's what I was going for for this one. Something like a wren, you know, just something a little brownish, yellowish, a little bird, just a little winter bird. I'm gonna tape all of my pieces. I'm really not paying too much attention about where I'm putting them. I find that usually when I'm not paying attention, things just serendipitously work out. And for instance, on this one, there's like a shot of yellow right where the bird's cheek would be. And there's no way I could have planned that. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I tried. If I tried, I would have mucked it all up. So I was kind of happy with that little happy accident. Here I'm just making sure that it die cut all the way through the watercolor paper, and it did. That little honeybee bitty buzz cutter, she's a, she's a good little cutter. She went right through that watercolor paper, no problem. So I've got all my pieces and we're just going to layer them and it's an easy to layer die. Uh, there's a nice full base layer and then everything just fits like a little puzzle on top of it. Now here's, here's one of those backgrounds. I created this first. I don't end up using this in the card so I cut that footage. But um, if that's something you'd be interested in seeing created, uh, just let me know and I can do I can do a video just on that. We're going to adhere this bird using some honeybee precision glue. A liquid adhesive is great for these because it gives you that little bit of wiggle room. And then I'm going to die cut the eyes, the beak and the feet from another ink blended panel. This one is done in browns and blacks. 
So the great thing about this particular die is I grouped all of those little pieces together on one die just so that you wouldn't have a bunch of tiny dies to lose track of. And having some kind of gem picker or like I have the crystal katana is perfect for adhering these little pieces, um, just getting them picked up and put into place. And there's our little bluebird who is now a little wren. Uh, I chose not to use the darker feet. I liked his little light brown feet. So it's up to you whether you use those or not. Okay, so this next portion, um, I'm trying to work out my card design here. And I decided to leave some of this, well, a lot of it in because a lot of the pieces that I ended up making, I do end up using in the end design. However, it's a minute to get there. <laughs> so I'm, I've put this in fast motion and kind of let you have a peek uh, behind the curtain, so to speak. This is our under the mistletoe die, and this is one of the floral sprigs from it. And I knew I wanted to incorporate this. I love this die. It is one of my all time favorites. It's one of, ah, I don't want to, I want to say it's like seven years old or something. Um, but it's just a really good uh, staple Christmas design. I've used it year after year after year. So it's definitely one of those where you get your money's worth from it. I started out by adding a little weathered wood to it. And now I'm adding a little red um, festive berries. These are both distress inks. A little bit of that festive berries in there because at this point, I still think I'm going to use that uh, poinsettia background. And I needed to work some red in there. I ultimately, like I've already told you, do not end up using that background, but there is something very magical that happens with these sprigs. And when we get to that, I will obviously point it out. Um, but in order to get to that point, I had to leave this part in because otherwise you'd be like, hey, where did those come from? <laughs> so this is one of those. It's still a good process because I use this process a lot when I'm coloring die cuts, just lightly adding some speckles of color and then target targeting some more color in areas. So for here, I used that speckled weathered wood and then I targeted the red on the berry portions of that floral sprig. So I pulled out our spring florals and I'm just kind of getting out the pieces that I want to use here. This is not a Christmas die. These are, you know, there's roses and these little like posy or daisy like flowers, these little tulip like flowers. However, florals are perfect year round for all occasions. Just cater your color palette to the holiday and you will have the perfect florals for all year long. It was at this point that I decided that background is way too busy for all that. The, the, the elements just get lost on it. So I need a mat. And I was like, all right, I definitely need a lighter mat. I don't want it to be stark white, but we definitely need a light, a lighter mat. We also need some contrast once we put it on that light mat. That's where that twig comes in. That twig is from the Honeybee Stamps um, Winter Greenery Layering Die. And I had already had that on my desk from a previous project. So I pulled that in and I thought that pulled the darker browns and blacks from his beak and his eye, thought that pulled those together nicely. At this point, it's starting to shape up with a, a layout that I'm, I'm happy with. So we're going to work on that background. It can't be clean, clean white. It just wouldn't look right with what we've got going so far. So I'm going to use some pumice stone oxide ink and I'm going to add a very light wash of color and I'm not covering the entire cardstock. I'm just adding speckles of that pumice stone here and there. And you can see I did the same thing. I smushed the pad, added some water, and now I'm picking up that ink with the paper. Again, this is watercolor cardstock. And I'm just going to keep kind of manipulating this until I get a very organic, worn look on the cardstock, but not dirty. <laughs> I still want that brightness and something relatively clean in comparison to the background that at this point I still think I'm going to try to use. And honestly, when I put it together and I'm looking back at it in the video, it's, it's not that bad. It's, um, I could probably have made this work just for some reason, whatever mood I was in, it, it just, it wasn't jiving for me. 
And honestly, I think what it was is festive berries kind of, when you add water, it pulls more pink. And I was really craving a deep Christmas red and I have not picked up that lumberjack plaid yet. And I really need to. I think that was my hang up, but we're definitely getting closer here. So we're just gonna focus on that center panel. I like to build my layouts from the focal point out. I know some people go the background in, I'm focal point out. So working with just that area, I, I'm gonna group all of my elements together in the lower left-hand corner. Um, I've got, I wanna create a visual triangle. So I've got the lower left-hand, which means I need to come up toward the middle right, and then again in the upper right. That's gonna create a visual triangle. It's gonna help, I need elements that will lead the eye all the way around those three elements on my page. So I'm gonna create like these rolling hills in the background out of vellum. I've torn two layers at uh, two different heights and I made sure that the back layer goes up at a diagonal so it hits that middle right area. So if you're going with the eye, that tall branch is what you're going to, is gonna lead you down to the bird, which is eventually going to be with a group of florals. That vellum is going to start leading your eye up to the upper right. And then in the upper right is where I'm going to have the sentiment. So it all kind of works its way around in a visual triangle. To adhere these, I'm going to stitch all the way around the outer perimeter of this focal panel. But before I do that, I do wanna add some background stamping. So I've grabbed our script background stamp, inked that with pumice stone, spritzed it with water, and now I'm stamping that on the background, again, working in that visual triangle. Then so that it's not you know, so perfect, I'm gonna spray just a couple of drops of water onto that ink and that's going to cause that to watermark and kind of spread some of that ink out. You can use a paintbrush to help manipulate that a little bit, but that'll just keep it from stamping too crisply. And then once the stitching was done, I'm just gonna use my fingers to fold over the tops of the vellum. This is just gonna add a little depth and dimension. And then I'm going to add a little bit more texture to that background. So I'm using the Winter Wonderland background from Honeybee Stamps. The stencil is amazing, I use it a lot. I'm gonna use some Wow White Puff Powder along with my embossing dabber. If you don't have a dabber, you could use um, your Versamark ink pad and a sponge applicator, that would work as well. I love the texture that this adds to winter scenes. I use it all the time. It puffs up really fat and looks like textured snow. Um, I've I've got to order a couple more bottles of this stuff. I'm almost out. I did that twice uh, just to make it a little more blizzardy back there. And then I added some to the white vellum in the front as well. And I'm still trying to make this background work. And it was right about here that I decided I'm just not feeling it. So let me see what I have in my stash. Let me see what other colors will go with this because if need be, I'll just create a whole new background, which spoiler alert, I do wind up doing. So I'm thinking I like the speckled egg with the gathered twigs. So uh, I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, we're going to go with that color combo. We're going to ditch the red. I'm going to cut some more of these floral sprigs from this watercolor paper. Now the back side of this is a, a project again that I did not end up using. It's got a watercolor poinsettia on the background. And when I put down the, one of the sprigs, it had flipped over onto the back side. And I really, really liked the way this looked. Here, you'll see I lay it down and I'm like, wait a minute. There's that true red that I was looking for. I think, I'm, I, think I might be able to make this work. This is where it started to come together. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm liking this. So like I said, the backside is a watercolor poinsettia painting that I had done that I did not use. I didn't love the way it turned out. And so I just started die cutting my pieces from that. And this is when it all started to really come together. And it was that red that I was looking for. And I'm using up something that I probably would have thrown away anyway. So this was a win-win. I love the random pattern that is captured when you die cut that. And it just adds a little interest to those sprigs. So I was, I was digging this. And that I was happy that I accidentally put one upside down and noticed that, hey, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> because I probably wouldn't have thought to do that otherwise. 
now that we're on our way and I've, I've finally got this focal point moving in the right direction, I've got a panel here that I've created using Distress Stain and Antique Linen, Festive Berries, and um, Aged Mahogany Distress Oxide. This gave me that deep, true Christmas red. And I've die cut some of the roses from the W plus nine spring florals die. Again, these are everyday flowers, but when we put them together in this Christmas palette, it is definitely going to read Christmas and there's no need to, you know, have a whole set of florals just for Christmas unless you want them because I know we want all the things. <laughs> so I've die cut a couple, so I have options. And before I start putting together a bouquet, I need to adhere the background, these um, floral areas and the twigs, the floral areas, the foliage and the twig. Anyway, I'm just going to squirt some uh, liquid adhesive behind areas which are going to be underneath the bird. And I can come back later and add more adhesive wherever I need to. But for now, I just need it to stay in place while I build my arrangement. And I created several more panels. Uh, some of these are left over from other projects. This one um, uses crushed olive, uh, probably a little peeled paint, and maybe a little bit of rustic wilderness, but it's just a mix of greens. I've die cut my leaves from those and I've die cut some more flowers, uh, also from that spring florals die set. And then I'm gonna start creating my arrangement. Now you'll notice that I'm shaping a lot of the pieces with my fingers here. I, I love adding dimension to these types of cards and sometimes that can be as easy as just shaping your die cut pieces and adding a little movement to them. So I'm gonna to get to a point where I think it's the arrangement that I'm going to use, but I do actually end up swapping the arrangement. I just end up turning it to face the other direction because it worked better with where I wanted to put my sentiment at the, at the end. However, I'm leaving all of this in because I promised I'd show you the process and it just goes to show that there is no right or wrong way and several, several designs could work for the same card. And hopefully it gives you some ideas of uh, ways you could switch it up if you wanted to create something similar. All right, I needed something to kind of um, mask where all of those uh, pieces come together right there. So I thought bows would be great. I did a twine bow. And now that watercolor piece that we die cut from has gold foil running through it. So I thought a gold thread bow would be perfect to tie that in. And these will eventually be adhered right there where all those stems meet. Okay, so now it is the next morning. I took a break, went to bed, and you can see here I've mirrored that arrangement. It's basically the same. I just flipped it to face the other direction, and now it's time to start adhering everything. And I almost always use a mix of liquid adhesive and um, different heights of foam adhesive. I just like the varying levels of height and the dimension that it gives. Again, these types of cards are all about that dimension. And there are several ways to add dimension, whether it's with color, um, embossing powders, textures, um, actual depth from foam tape. So play around with all of your different mediums and the different ways to add texture. I know this one is a long video, you guys, and I appreciate you hanging in there. Again, if this is the type of stuff that you like to see, if you wanna see more of this every so often, make sure that you leave it in the comments below. And if it's not your cup of tea, I completely understand. You can always watch it at t t twice the speed. Um, I don't know how my voice will sound at twice the speed, but you can mute me. I won't mind, I won't be offended. <laughs> All right, so here you can see I'm tucking that gold that gold thread up underneath the rose, and then I'm laying that uh, twine bow right on top. And then for the most part, this is done. Now you could stop here, but you know I'm gonna add some more finishing touches, but we're gonna move on to the background now. And we're gonna create a mat first for our focal point. I'm using Distress Spray Stains in Antique Linen and Festive Berries, and then I'm gonna add some Oxide Spray in Fired Brick. Now I am using a scrap piece of paper that did not get used from another project and we're going to match it to that rose. So first I'm going to spray my paper with some water and that's just going to help those inks move and blend together on the paper. Again, I'm just trying to get a mottled red, dark, deep color that matches our rose and it's just going to be the matte for that focal point. So I'm going to layer this up drying in between 
Occasionally I'll spray on some water and put some water droplets in there for some watermarking. Dry that down, pick up the excess with my paper towel, and there we go. Super easy. Okay, now we need to replace that background that um, we've been trying to work with, but it's just not going to work. I'm using the poinsettia bouquet stamp set here, and I've taken that large bouquet and I've mounted it onto a acrylic block, and we're going to do some water stamping. I'm inking this up with Distress Oxide and Pumice Stone ink, and you can use any inks you want here, any water-soluble inks. You could even mix multiple colors, but I want a very subtle background and just some interest and texture. So I've sprayed that stamp with probably three or four full bursts from the Distress Sprayer, and then I added a little bit of extra to the cardstock as well. I want this to, again, be very, um, very, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, subtle. <laughs> I want this to be very subtle. You also notice there's some red coming through. That's because my stamp was dirty from that previous background, but here it's not really going to make a big difference because I already have red in my project, so it's no big deal. And this is actually the exact same technique that I used to create that first panel, except for I used multiple colors on my stamp. Now, you could stop here but I wanted to uh, distress this a little bit more, so I'm adding some more ink to my mat there. I'm dipping my cardstock panel directly into that. And then I'm going to take some pumice stone distress stain and add some darker areas of color. I've taken the lid off and I'm using the nozzle to just flick some droplets down onto the paper. And then I'm spraying those with water just to help them spread out a little bit. And this is going to just add a little bit of contrast to the background, but not too much contrast just a little bit and make it look a little more old and worn. And I'll just repeat this process till I'm happy with the results. And once that's dry, I want to incorporate some of that text from the focal panel into the background. So again, I'm going to use our script background stamp set. I've put this onto a thick piece of acetate here, and we're going to randomly stamp some script into the background. Now I'm using the, uh, the acetate because it's nice and flexible, but it's stiff enough that I can use the sides like a handle. I'm gonna treat this with the Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool here, and then we're gonna do some heat embossing. Again, we've got that gold in the foil on that foliage, and then we've got the gold threads, so I want to bring that gold into the background. And having this on that acetate really makes it easy to only stamp pieces and portions of that background because it's flexible and I can bend it back. Anywhere that I get a little more than I want, or if I want to break up some areas, I can just use a dry paintbrush to knock away some of that embossing powder before I melt it with my heat gun. So you can see now we've got this beautiful bit of gold embossing in the background that's going to tie in the gold in the focal panel. And with all of the major pieces uh, put together here, it's time to add some finishing details. I'm going to use the Wow Parissa powder. We're going to add some splatters of some mixed metals to this background. I've already done the stitching around the edge to match that focal panel. And now I'm going to just use water and a paintbrush to flick some water spots onto this background and just sprinkle the embossing powder on top. Now the water will hold the embossing powder. You may need to heat this from behind, but uh, if you do it quickly, there's enough water there to hold that powder, heating it from the front. I love this embossing powder. It is a mixed metal um, embossing powder. Some of the granules are very fine and some of them are very coarse. And the more you melt it, the more liquidy it looks and it takes on the appearance of like molten metal. It is just absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorites. We're going to add some of that same detail just to tie it into the focal panel. And this time I'm using the Distress Sprayer. And I'm going to sprinkle that on and be careful when you're working on vellum like this. There's a lot of static in vellum, so use a dry brush to take care of any stray granules that you don't want on your vellum. And again, we're going to just heat that and melt it down and uh, absolutely love this powder. Just be careful when you're uh, heating vellum like this though. Keep your gun moving. Don't leave it in one spot too long because it's easy to scorch the vellum. Okay, so I'm adhering that back panel to our card base and now we're going to add a few more finishing details before we adhere that focal panel. I wanted to incorporate that vellum some more, so I'm taking some torn pieces, roughing them up with my fingers, and then gluing them just so that they're peeking out, 
here and there behind our focal panel. I love how this ties that vellum in the very front to the back of the card and um, it's just an extra added detail. And that just leaves us with our sentiment. So for that, I'm using the Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz uh, Tiny Text Christmas stamp set. I love this stamp set. It's full of just great small sentiments that are perfect for these types of cards. I'm distressing that background the same way I did the others, a little bit of pumice stone distress oxide ink, and then just a tiny bit of that pumice stone distress stain. The distress stain is much darker than the oxide ink, and it does lean a little green, so I wanted to pull in a little bit of that contrast. And we're going to stamp that with distress oxide and gathered twigs. Now, I originally thought I was going to put this in the bottom right hand corner, but I ultimately ended up putting it in the upper right hand corner and backing it with just a little bit of vellum to, again, tie in all of those vellum pieces. And that finishes the card. So here is a look at it all assembled and put together. I love creating these kind of cards because creating the card is a creative process, correct? But with these types of cards, each step is its own little mini creative process in its own. So it's extremely rewarding and you feel like you're really getting to maximize that creative time. So I really, really enjoy these types. And speaking of maximizing, remember the only uh, Christmas items we used was that poinsettia background stamp and the sentiment there. So all the rest utilizes everyday stamp sets and we've got a beautiful holiday card. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Now, you can find all of the supplies in the video description below, as well as a link to our blog where you'll find stills and a complete supply list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.